Two years ago, you said that you wanted to be judge on your education record. Um, dropping our position in Scotland since 2006 on several different key indicators in the PISA International Study, 10th to 19th position internationally on in science, 11th to 23rd on reading, 11th to 24th on maths, Scotland overall is average for a country that once prided itself on its literacy and numeracy. That is pretty disastrous. Well, that's why I've said we've got improvements to make. That PISA study, incidentally, is two years old now. But you've so been in power for 10 years. No, look, I, I, what I'm doing here has been pretty frank, both about where we've made good progress mm. in education, and I'm, I'm not going to sit here and accept that there are not areas where real progress mm. is being made. But 10 but, years? But what I'm saying, Kirsty, is we have, and I can point you to lots of things where over that 10 year period we're seeing improvements mm. in our education system. I can cite the fact that there are uh, fewer young people from our deprived communities leave school now with no qualifications. That number has halved since we took office. We've got record numbers of young people going into university. The attainment gap there is starting to narrow. In uh, your election manifesto, uh, you mentioned independence just once and there was <laughs> absolutely no reference to the referendum and the reason is isn't it that you know actually talking about independence just now is not a vote winner well you know this, this is one of the, the strange things about scottish politics just now because if you're interviewing any of my political opponents what they will tell you is that i talk about nothing but independence now the fact of the matter is my position on uh, giving people a choice at the end of the brexit process is clear but i'm also uh, fighting a Westminster election where I think it's also really important to talk about what SNP MPs can do to stand against further Tory cuts and to strengthen Scotland's hand in the Brexit negotiations. If the Tories take uh, target seats, if they say take 10 of the target seats, you may even lose your deputy leader if that happens, would you then accept that this has been a high watermark for independence. Well, look, you know, I, I hear these things all the time. We, we had we had an exceptional election result in 2015. I hope we can repeat that, but and we're working hard to do that. But I mean, you know this well. Before that election result, the most MPs the SNP had ever had in our entire history uh, was 11. We had six in the Parliament before we got 56. So I, I get people saying to me now. You know, if you only get 50, if you only get 45, if you only get 40, that's somehow a disaster. It's a ridiculous way of looking at things. In the Times today, there is a poll which suggests a hung parliament. In that scenario, would you do a deal with Theresa May? Uh, no. I wouldn't put a Conservative Prime Minister into office. Even if she said, Nicola Sturgeon, I am going to give you top billing next to me at the Brexit negotiations. Look, we have Tory, and for my lifetime, Tory governments have uh, been damaging for industry, for public services, for public finances in Scotland. I uh, think I've got a duty to be honest with people. I wouldn't support a, a Conservative Prime Minister. You've already said that there could be some kind of accommodation uh, with Labour, but could you really do a deal with Jeremy Corbyn, Look, a man that you've said is not fit to be Prime Minister? I, Seriously? I'm, I'm trying just to be frank with people. I, I've said, I said it in 2015. If the arithmetic made a progressive alliance possible, I would want to explore the SNP being part of that, not as a formal coalition. But, but I also have to deal in reality. And I don't think that's where we're headed in this election. Did Theresa May wrong foot you by calling this election? I think on what I've seen over the last few days, she wrong footed herself in calling this election. You know, I think it's been uh, bizarre watching the Prime Minister who called this election appear to be the most unprepared uh, of the leaders for this election. She can't answer basic questions. Uh, she has spent the election trying to dodge scrutiny and avoid talking to, to real voters. So I think if Theresa May's wrong-footed anybody by calling the election, it's herself and she's probably already starting to regret it.